I'm Kinsey, and today I'm here to talk about becoming a software engineer, um, inspiring a new generation of developers. So if you were to tell me a year ago that I would be speaking at a Ruby conference in France, I would have laughed at you and told you that you were crazy. Um, I never dreamt or even thought it was possible that I would find such a yearning passion for writing code. I thought I wasn't smart enough, and I grew up building Barbie's dream house, not computers. I was an advertising major in college, and I had an easy path to pursuing a career in marketing. I had been working in agencies since I was 16, and I was good at it. And the thought of being a software engineer never crossed my mind, and honestly, it looked really boring and intimidating. People are shocked and sometimes even blatantly negative when, I, when they hear about my new dreams of becoming a software engineer. Friends' jaws dropped when I, was, when I told them that I was learning to write code. I've also received a lot of comments that I'm too sociable and that I'm the last person on earth they thought would want to write code, that I should be in sales, and that I don't think in the way a developer should. I don't ever want to let these comments discourage me, although it's easier said than done. There are times when I want to give up, literally throw my computer out the door, and go back to some of the mindless work that I did in advertising. The path to becoming a software developer, in my eyes, was straightforward and well-defined. You needed, you needed a computer science degree to have dropped out of your computer science degree to work for a company writing code, right? I hear a lot of laughs, so a lot of you. Or have been a self-taught self programmer who learned to code at a very young age. Recently, the community has seen a rise in non-traditional paths to becoming a software engineer. These paths are the future to building a diverse community and training the next generation of developers. Today, I'm here to argue that outreach programs, mentorship, and apprentice programs are a legitimate path to becoming a software engineer. This path has been the beginning of my journey, making me see that the impossible is actually possible. So I can honestly tell you that a RailsBridge program or workshop changed my life. Does anybody here know what RailsBridge is or Rails Girls? A couple Rails Girls, right? Um, so it's an outreach program, RailsBridge, similar to Rails Girls, is an outreach program that puts on free weekend workshops where people learn from experienced Rails volunteers. These workshops attract a lot of beginners, and in one day you get to build a basic Rails app and deploy it on Heroku. This is my tweet from the first time I did a Rails bridge, and I was so excited. Um, so it planted a seed to career that I had always dreamed of but hadn't yet realized. I not only met Desi McAdam, who would become one of my greatest mentors and influencers, but discovered a passion for writing Rails that I never would have discovered on my own. RailsBridge taught me that writing code wasn't scary, and in a few hours, I deployed my first application. I remember it like it was yesterday, yelling to my best friend Emma at the top of my lungs across the room that I was going to write code from now on. RailsBridge was the beginning of my journey where I learned that I could actually have a passion for programming. So Sarah May and Sarah Allen started RailsBridge in 2009 when the San Francisco Ruby community was 98% male and only 2% female. Since the program lowered the barrier to entry, they saw an increase of women attending the workshops. And in one year, the Sarah saw the female ratio increase from 2 to 18%. I am definitely not the only one who has pursued a career in web development thanks to RailsBridge, and here are a few testimonials from some of the women that attended various workshops and who are now full-time software engineers. Rachel Myers, who is now a developer at GitHub, said this about her experience. Laura Stedman, who is now a developer at Quip, Click Left, said, attending RailsBridge was inspiring, not because of what I built that day, but the sincere enthusiasm of the volunteers. She was amazed that people would give up their Friday and Saturday nights to teach people how to write code. Richa Avasti, who is a developer at Outright, said this. So there are other amazing outreach programs out there, such as Rails Girls, Women Who Code, Black Girls Who Code, et cetera, all of which need sponsors, teachers, and volunteers on an ongoing basis. Rails Girls Paris is actually having a workshop this weekend in lieu of the conference, which is awesome. So how many people are going to that or volunteering for that? A few. OK, cool. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, and there's actually 100 girls this weekend that are going to be learning how to write rails. And that starts tonight and continues on tomorrow. So now that I've talked about outreach programs, I want to focus on mentorship. Mentorship is another really important aspect to training the next generation of developers. Mentorship is beneficial to me because I look to my mentors for technical skills, soft skills, and support. Because to go from attending a RailsBridge workshop to becoming a full-time software engineer was so much more difficult than I thought. <laughs> there are days when I come home in tears, literally, and feel really stupid and frustrated for not understanding basic concepts. I'm not only learning how to write Ruby, Rails, testing frameworks, use Git, but learn a completely new way of thinking. And Desi, who I mentioned earlier is one of my greatest mentors, has opened doors for me that I didn't know existed. Desi and one other mentor in particular are always there for me to pick me back up when I'm feeling frustrated and cannot continue. They remind me of how far I've come in a year and how hard it truly is to understand this stuff. No matter how busy they are, they always are there to listen and help me even when I get stuck on a problem and I'm floundering. And they give me the encouragement that I sometimes desperately need. Mentoring is also beneficial to my mentors. My mentors constantly tell me how mentoring ultimately makes them a better developer because it solidifies an understanding of the content being taught. John Foley, who's a developer at Pivotal Labs, I know some people in the audience know him, he um, told me that mentoring elevates you from thinking you know to actually knowing you know or not knowing at all. So mentoring not only provides countless and necessary benefits to the mentee, so people like me, but to the mentor prospectively. Even advanced developers can learn new things by having to explain it in a way that a beginner can understand it. So how many people here have ever mentored some, been mentored by somebody? Anyone, a few of you. And did it help you in advancing your career as a software engineer? Yes, I see a few yeses. So I want to encourage everyone to become a mentor. If you have the time, resources, and patience to do so. Mentoring is a really hard thing to do, and it definitely isn't for everyone. It requires a lot of time and patience. Now, to touch on how to be a good mentor, since I've had so many this past year, uh, mentors who are unaware of the fact that they are coming off as discouraging could ruin or completely dissuade, dissuade a beginner's passion for the craft. It is important to be aware of sign and frustration. I've had that happen to me a lot, where they sigh at me because they're so frustrated. <laughs> Um, language that is discouraging, and body language when mentoring an apprentice. But the most important piece of advice I can give to mentors is to have empathy. It is, it is extremely discouraging to be told that this is easy and you should be understanding this. It's really not easy, especially for someone who has never done it before. How long have you been writing code? Something that is easy to you now might not be so easy for a beginner. Also, remember that your mentee might have a completely different way of thinking or approaching a problem, and it's important to put yourself in their shoes. My incredible mentors and experience at RailsBridge not only changed my life, but changed others around me in an almost ripple effect. I have one friend who's wanting to do an apprentice program in dev boot camp to become a developer, and another friend, after hearing about what I was doing, was inspired to move to a completely new state to attend an intensive Ruby on Rails school. So intense Ruby on Rails training programs like G School and Dev Boot Camp are examples of alternative education options that I don't have time to discuss today, but I fortunately get to spend a lot of time around the G Schoolers because we work in the same co-working space, and it's amazing to see the applications that they build in such a short amount of time. Um, we can all talk about the struggles of learning how to write code together, so it's cool. <laughs> now that I have talked about outreach programs and mentorship, I will talk about apprentice programs. Um, and it's intense training that you would not receive at a university from a four-year computer science degree. And apprentice programs can take a passionate learner and turn them into a competent and reliable software engineer. I'm really, really fortunate because ThoughtBot accepted me into their apprentice program this past year. 25%, a quarter of ThoughtBot's company uh, employees were, current, were apprentices at the company at one point. That's a lot, a quarter of the company. Dan, the CMO, describes why the program was created in this quote. And Chad, the CEO, stated, everyone in the program who has been eligible to get a job afterward has gotten a job with ThoughtBot or another employer, which is pretty cool. 
I think that ThoughtBot is an innovative and successful company because it is diverse, where people come from many different backgrounds. We have a veteran, many Rails Bridge graduates, and musicians, et cetera. ThoughtBot's apprentice program has given me the biggest push in achieving my dream, and they believe I can do it, support me, and even take the time and money that it takes to train me. ThoughtBot rewards and supports its employees for engaging in mentoring programs and participating in programs like Rails Bridge, Rails Girls. This is something that I think all companies should be doing. And more generally, the US Department of Labor did a study on apprentice programs in the United States that proved that apprentice graduates had much higher earnings than those who did not. The study also showed that the social and overall benefits to the company that maintained the apprentice program appeared to be much larger than the cost. Over the career of an apprentice, the estimated benefits exceeded the initial cost by more than $49,000. So I have really pushed every limit that I have during my apprenticeship. It is the hardest I have ever worked, and a lot of the times it doesn't feel like it's paying off. The more that I learn, the more I feel like, the more I feel behind because I realize I have so much more to learn. It can be really discouraging, but the apprentice program is set up in a way that I have support when I'm feeling like this. I can talk to my current mentor, I can talk with the director of the apprentice program, or even my managing director. Apprentice programs are not only a legitimate path to becoming a developer, but a bridge for people coming out of these outreach programs that I spoke about earlier. Even after doing multiple Rails bridges and working tirelessly with many mentors, I still wasn't ready to become a full-time software engineer managing large web applications. I needed something like ThoughtBot's apprentice program to really jump off into the deep end of writing code. The apprentice program created a structured environment where I can continue to learn best practices and become a developer that produces reliable and maintainable software. So why is all this important? Why is it important to have educational alternatives to training the next generation of developers? Diversity, a massive lack of quality engineers, and traditional education isn't providing us with the amount of people that we need. Access to the internet, is a privilege. White males specifically have access at an earlier age and at a much higher rate than females and people of different ethnic backgrounds. Statistics show that boys get their computers, their first computers, at age 11, while girls at 14. And it is even later for people of color who tend to adopt smartphones more quickly. And I can't imagine trying to write code on a phone. Um, females make up more than half of undergrad graduates, but only 18% of computer science graduates. There is a high barrier to entry via the traditional computer science route in university. Financial access, obviously, discrimination, lack of role models, lack of encouragement in general are all creating this large gap of diversity. These are all barriers that are really hard to overcome. So if we want to create diversity within the industry, education must come from elsewhere. Outreach programs, mentorship, and apprentice programs are all alternatives to traditional education that lower the barriers to entry to becoming a developer. And this is key in creating a diverse community. And I want to emphasize, this is important, that it is lowering the barriers and not the standards. Alternative education needs to be high quality and caliber in order to maintain a standard in the industry. Another thing to be aware of is a lot of these programs and alternative paths are in predominantly white areas for people of an average or even high socioeconomic status. It would be awesome to see mentorship, apprentice programs, and outreach programs happening in rural areas that have low socioeconomic status and diversity. And we all know that diversity is important because not only does it drive economic growth overall, it has been scientifically proven that diversity fosters innovation and enhanced abilities to solve problems. Approaching tricky programming problems from many perspectives proves to be very successful in this industry. Secondly, there is a massive lack of quality engineers. How many people here are hiring on an ongoing basis? Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> How difficult is it for you to find quality engineers? Hard. Companies continue, struggling, continue to struggle to find engineers. And according to NCWIT research, if current trends continue, by 2018, the information technology industry will not only be, will not be able to fill half of its available jobs. There are many people who never considered software engineering as a viable career option because they were discouraged from it, 
never thought they were smart enough, never grew up with a computer, or were intimidated by people who had been programming for most of their life. These people can discover the pas their passion and take an alternative approach, such as the ones I discussed earlier. Thirdly, the traditional computer science degree isn't providing the industry with the developers it needs. Most people coming out of college are not even ready for full-time engineering jobs, and it takes four or more years to even get the degree, and not to mention the hefty price tag that comes along with it. So thanks to programs like RailsBridge, my amazing mentors, ThoughtBot's apprentice program, I'm here today to speak about the importance of alternative educational paths in software development. Back at home, I am knees deep in what I call my apprenticeship boot camp, um, I call it, where I'm learning interface design and test driving code from my amazing mentor. And I'm on an incredible path to becoming a great software engineer, and I feel like the luckiest person in the world and probably the happiest I've ever been. So I would be lying, though, if I told you that my path so far has been easy and constantly rewarding. There are times when I'm really close to quitting, and there are times when I cry from feeling so frustrated and incompetent, when the test suite won't turn green. But I know that I love what I'm doing and will not quit. I know this because of the chills I get when I manage to get through it and refactor and produce some beautiful code. It literally moves me and makes me feel like I can do anything I put my mind to. And I know that I just have to stick with it and keep going. So my goal is that other people who had never thought that becoming a software engineer was possible will become inspired by one of these alternative educational programs or by an influential mentor and discover not only that they can be a great developer, but have passion for it. So thank you guys for putting time and energy into people taking these alternative paths. It's really not a waste of time. So that is all I have today. And feel free to contact me on Twitter or email me if you have any questions or want to discuss anything. Thank you.